Hi, welcome to the Commercial Gas Engineer channel. Just going to give you a quick tour of this plant room and let's see if we can identify what we see and also feel free in the comments to share anything that you know about the parts that I haven't mentioned. So you see this is a pegler lever handle valve. So you can um, isolate by closing down or, or leaving it this way and that leaves it on. It has a number on it and you can look on a chart and that will indicate what the lever valve is doing. Over here you have a flange with bellows so you inside here you'd have the washer that comes that this comes as part of the flange and the bellows so that's inside here and in order to get the sides for these you can have a look on the side sometimes they're not always on there they're defaced so this one here has got the DN number the diameter nominal 40 and the PN number should be on there somewhere um, PN number it says, I think it's PN number, it says 10 slash 16, so pressure nominal. That's what the PN number is. Um, up here you have a Magna pump. So you have the Magna Grumpus pump there. You can go through the settings on these. Well, this one's off. Let's go to one that's on. See if we can see anything on here. You can go through the settings on these. Um, and it's got certain diagnostic things on here pump performance warning and alarms so do head through the settings and so on and see the set points okay see a pressure switch here this looks like a high high pressure switch tell me what you know about these high pressure switches in particular they're made by Emerson Climate Technologies. It is, it is connected to one side of the pump and the other side of the pump down here. Over here you have a 200 litre expansion vessel followed by another 200 litre expansion vessel. It has an isolation point here which you should look out for. You should also look out for lagging on them as well. You should look for a drain, a local drain point as well. It's nice when they've got a pressure gauge nearby, like this one up here has a pressure gauge on it. When you are ordering these pressure gauges, don't just ask for a pressure gauge. Ensure that you have the right size, otherwise you can end up with a mini one or one that just doesn't fit. Up here looks like a pressure reducing valve. This PN, sorry, DN15, diameter nominal 15. You've got an isolation valve and a check valve. And just after that check valve, you have a quick fill to fill up the system. And then on the other side of it, just before, you had a pressurization unit, a flam coal pressurization unit. Learn the passwords for these and be comfortable in going through the settings. There is another pressure gauge up there. And one further down. Anyone want to put in the comments below why there is a loop in these gauges? Pop that in the comments below. There you have what looks like a temperature sensor going back to the BMS and another temperature sensor going back to the BMS. Over here this looks like a commissioning valve. So here we have a temperature sensor. It says on the back temperature sensor. Okay, earlier I said that this was a temperature sensor. I may be wrong. It could be a flow sensor. I'm not 100% sure. It may be a flow sensor. Up here you have a freeway valve. And on top you have an actuator. Here you have a line strainer. 
where you can unscrew and remove the filter they have valves either side so that you can work on it up here you have a grumpus pump with the direction arrow and at the bottom you have the ducts bottom so if you don't see the direction arrow you always have the ducts bottom to help you point you in the right direction okay here you have the dosing pot put your chemicals in the system and up here you have pressure reducing valves with gauges on them one on the right one on the left and then up here you have zone valves I haven't seen these zone valves before but you have zone valves to different parts of the building and over here you have another line strainer it's a bigger strainer it's a it's a P, it's PN number is PN32 as for its DN number that's probably on the other side but you would unscrew here and take the filter out and give it a clean this is a two inch two inch strainer and here you have a tapping point I believe they call this a binder point I might be wrong I believe it's called a binder point where you can tap into the system so at the top there you have our air and dirt separator our air and dirt separator so it's got a automatic air vent on the top and then up here we have what looks like a bypass valve and it's like a bypass valve where you can set it to what you want it to bypass at what pressure over here you have the safety knockoff button when you hit this should shut off the gas or or machinery from operating and then reset by turning there or on the control panel or on the BMS have the PRV the pressure relief valve on the back of this unit ensure that they are no more than five years old there we have a check valve going into the boiler here you have your thermal link this is for fire safety here you have your safety isolation on your BMS control panel sometimes without turning the power off you can go into the control panel sometimes there's a little catch like at the bottom or where you can press or a way of getting in without shutting the power off it varies on different um, isolation isolation points over here you have your gas solenoid valve and above you have a butterfly isolation valve you have to clip these in and then turn them I'm sure you already know over here you have your secondary hot water pump on its way back to the gas fired water heater and then Andrew's gas fired water heater here just providing hot water to the building okay thank you for joining me until next time bye bye bye